السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Assalamu alaikum. How's everyone doing? Uh, <clears throat> I know it's been a while since I've been on here uh, to give a daughter or anything like that. So uh, it feels good to be back. And um, I felt, you know, what better way to come back and talk about something that's very important, very vital something that I got to experience over the last three weeks and that is uh, brotherhood and our and our relationship with our community um, Alhamdulillah uh, when I was away for three weeks uh, I have to mention this because it's very important to me um, <clears throat> as I was uh, getting better because I wasn't feeling too well uh, I had brothers from this community from our community that I've known for a very long time, uh, who checked in on me, made sure I was okay. Uh, even some of the leadership of our community, alhamdulillah, um, checked in on me, made sure I was okay. The director of the, uh, of the uh, community center checked on me, made sure I was okay. Everybody I worked with checked on me, made sure I was okay. Uh, there were even uh, mothers who had heard about how I was doing and you know, sent word to other individuals who was close to my family to check in on me to make sure I was okay. And it just really impacted me. It really moved me to see how much, how much love that the Muslims uh, were showing in difficult times. And that's what, you know, um, that's what made this particular uh, discussion possible. And, you know, I just want to mention that right now we are going through a very difficult time. Our communities. SubhanAllah, because of the uh, coronavirus, you know, let's be frank. All over the world, not just this community, but all over the world, uh, our massages, they have to close for the safety of everybody that attends the masjid. So many, so many of our loved ones are turning up sick you know unfortunately some of those loved ones don't make it I got a very close friend of mine who early on when this when this virus took shape he lost his uncle you know so many things are happening people are losing their jobs daily this is the time that we really come together we really come together and we really show brotherhood and unity. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith, he was talking about the unity of the, of the Ummah. He said, the example of the believers in their mutual love and mercy is like the example of a body. Right? Of a body. If one part of the body feels pain, then all of the body suffers in, in sleepless and fever. Right? So when we think about that, right, we are... One body. When one of us gets sick, no matter, no matter, right? Subhanallah. He says that we're all like one body, right? So no matter if he's some someone as small as you know, like like a finger on the body, right? Or if he's somebody as important as the head on the body, right? No matter what gets sick on that body, whatever gets hurt on that body, we all feel it. Whoever it is, you know, and 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 that's something that we have to. Uh, we have to show love in that, in that regard to one another. And so I just want to talk about this importance of the community. And, you know, I want to talk about some of the things that are, are, are destructive to, to our community. You know, one time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want you guys to listen to this, it's very interesting. Uh, there was a young man from the Muhajirun and a young man from the Ansar. They had a little dispute, a quarrel or whatever. So the Mahajir said, O Mahajirun, meaning 
come help me, right? He's calling the Muhajirun, right? He didn't call the Ansar, right? He didn't call, he called his his people, his guys, right? He said, oh, 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 oh Muhajirun, as in the come help me. And then the Ansari said, okay, well, oh, Ansari, right? As if to say, come here, come help me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so hurt by seeing this, he said, are you all, while I'm still living among you, you're going to revert back to the Jahiliyyah days, to the days of ignorance? So what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and listen to this, right? It's not like, you know, they were talking about specific tribes of Arab at that time. No. Muhajirun and Ansar, right? They made, subhanAllah, it's like it's, it's within human nature, right? To make factions and groups. Right, so they, they, you know, okay, I'm a Hajirun, I'm gonna call my guys. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, that's that's just another form of tribalism. It's another form of nationalism. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, even while I'm alive, while I'm alive, y'all gonna revert to this. So the interesting thing about all of this is that, you know, Subhanallah, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm an African American uh, Muslim brother, and I have to say, Alhamdulillah, I grew up in this community. You know, since I was 12. Went to universal school, you know, and something that has always been important to me is the obliteration of the different uh, ideas that, oh, well, you know, the Palestinians hang out with the Palestinians or, you know, the Iraqis hang out with the Iraqis. I, I always wanted and do, and so many brothers around me did and do uh, look at each other as one. It's my brother. I love you. Whatever it is. Sisters, that's my sister. I love you. Whatever it is. You know, and we have to, but the Prophet ﷺ also said another thing. He said that one thing, one of the things that will not leave his ummah until the end of time is nationalism or tribalism. And we still see it today. I mean, this is something that we still struggle with in different forms and different ways. But this is something that we have to rise above. And what now, what time better than now to do it when we really need it, when we really need to be together, when we really need to be uh, collective and, and, and one ummah. Let's uh, let's move forward, right? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu even in this, there's, there's five rights, five rights that the believer has on his brother. Listen to this. Prophet Sallallahu said, the right of one Muslim over another are six. I'm sorry, six. In this particular hadith, there is one narration that says five, and this one it says six. It was said, uh, what are they, O Messenger of Allah? He said, if you meet him, greet him with the salams. Right? Now, we're living in a time where to greet somebody with the salams, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he also said in another hadith, that towards the end of time, people will, 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 will only say the salam to the people they know. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is trying to obliterate this idea that, oh, I only speak to my people. No! No, if I say the salam to you or you say the salam to me, this is what's going to build that community. That we, we, we return the salam. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Right? And we know in the Quran, right, that we have to return with either a better greeting or at least equal, right? See how, how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to make sure that we take care of you and I, we take care of each other, right? And then the Prophet Wasallam said, after uh, greeting the Salams, he says, if he's invited, he should accept the invitation. Right? So, subhanAllah, you know, uh, Azumas, uh, whatever it is that we're having, right? Uh, you know, of course, now we need to be a little cautious about the things that we show up to and how we show up to them, right? But when you're given an invitation, show up. You were invited. You're important. Right? And this is what builds that community, right? That community relations. This is how we develop our love for each other. Right? And then the Prophet ﷺ said, if he asks for advice, this is, this is the one that isn't in the other hadith. If he asks for advice, then give him sincere advice. Right? SubhanAllah, all of these little, they're small, but they, they're, they're the things that really build love and, and, and community amongst each other, right? We want to go to our brothers for, for advice. We don't want to go to somebody who, who, who's a stranger or, you know, who's outside of the, the, the Muslim ummah, the Muslim community. No, we want to go to each other, right? And then the Prophet also, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, if he sneezes and praises Allah, meaning if he sneezes and he says, alhamdulillah, 
then you say, Yarhamakullah, right? Which is what? May Allah have mercy on you. I mean, look at these things, right? SubhanAllah, when you praise Allah because you sneezed, then we should return to you asking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon you mercy. Right? And then uh, the next one, which is, you know, the one that I, uh, the next two rather. If he falls sick, visit him. Now listen to this. Now we're living in a time again with this, this virus, right? That it not, may not be necessarily very safe to be around people uh, when, they, when they fall ill with this virus. Or but at least we could call, right? We could, we could pick up the phone and man, I heard you got, and that's what, you know, SubhanAllah, a lot of brothers did for me. They called me and they made sure I was okay. It was beautiful, right? Call. Even if you don't just call, right? Do a Zoom. If you want to see them, do a Zoom or you want them to see you. Right? Send some food over there. You know, we got so so much technology now. You can send things, groceries over. You don't even have to leave the house anymore. Look out for each other. That's what all of this is talking about. And then, if someone passes away, that we attend the funerals, right? That we're there to pray on our dead. That we are there to pray on our brothers and our sisters and when they pass away and we, and we show up. See, the Prophet was trying to build... You know, that community, that sense of love and responsibility for one another. Right? Let's move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith, or well, the Prophet said in a hadith Qudsi, that Allah says on the day of resurrection, He will say, O oh, son of Adam, meaning he's, he's addressing mankind, right? O oh, son of Adam, I fell ill, and you visited me not. Right? So the son of Adam says, O oh, Lord, and how should I visit you? When you are the Lord of the worlds. Think of this for a second, right? He says, how can I visit you when you're the owner of everything? Right? And look at, look at the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So beautiful. He said, he said, did you not know that my servant so-and-so fell ill and you visited him not? Did you not know that had you visited him, you would have found me with him? Subhanallah. And we know, right, that when our sick, when they make a dua, you know, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears the dua of the sick and he answers the dua of the sick, right? Allah is with them. Visit the sick. Check on them. Make sure they're okay. Right? The next part of the hadith says, O oh, son of Adam, I asked you for food and you fed me not. He will say, O oh Lord, and how should I feed you when you are the Lord of the world? And he will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Did you not know that my servant so-and-so asked you for food and you fed him not? Did you not know that had you fed him, you would surely have found that the reward is with me, that I would have rewarded you for it? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. The, 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 the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, a very beautiful hadith, Listen to this. He said, he is not a believer. So the Prophet ﷺ said, he is not a believer who spends the night satiated. Meaning he's full, he's, feel, he's good, he's, he's great, he's feeling awesome. He had a great meal, all of that, satiated. His appetite has been, you know, it's, it's been taken care of. While the neighbor to his side is hungry. Check on, and, and, and right, think about this, right? How would we know? How would we know if so-and-so is hungry? We have to what? We have to check on them. Right? So it's not just, you know, giving food to people in need. It's also keeping up with one another, checking on each other, making sure we're all good. And we need to do that right now. We got to keep our eyes open. Make sure everybody's okay. Make sure everybody, we got we to gotta really, you know, ride this storm out. Listen to this, right? So the rest of the hadith could see. After, right, so after Allah says about fee, uh, feeding the individual who's hungry, and then he says, uh, he says, O son of Adam, I asked you to give me drink, and you gave me not, and you didn't give me anything to drink. He will say, O Lord, how should I give you drink when you are the Lord of the worlds, right? Meaning you're the owner of everything. How could I give you something you already own? He will say, my servant, so and so asked you to give me to drink, and you gave him not. Had you given him to drink, you would have surely found me that, that I was, uh, you would have found that with me, right? You would have found me with him. So, 
We got to do our part, right? Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a beautiful uh, thing about Salman and the Farsi. Now we know about Salman, that Salman uh, was uh, eventually sold or, or forced into slavery. And when he waited for so long for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's arrival, he asked his master, uh, he, he wanted his freedom. And his master gave him some ridiculous uh, 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 thing to free him that, honestly, if, if, if anybody would have been given this, they would have not been able to do it. And it was like, plant 300 trees, all 300 of them have to grow uh, by the next year. And it was a certain amount of gold or silver that he had to give also for his freedom. And so he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, such a beautiful story, went to the community, went to the Muslims. And all the Muslims were coming in with seeds that they had left over, date palm trees for date palm trees. Seeds they were bringing in, giving it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till they had 300. Some brought in 10, some brought in 5, 1, some brought in as many as they could to free Salman, their brother. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's what we're supposed to do. Look out for one another. Planted all the trees. They all grew. We, 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 uh, if you should check that story out if you don't know about it. It's a beautiful story. Right? Then the Prophet Sallallahu also said that there, uh, there came a time uh, where Jibreel السلام, kept advising me to be good to the neighbor until I thought he would make them my heirs. Right, so Jibreel was reminding him so much, be good to your neighbors, that he thought that Jibreel would force, like, khalas, they're, they're your heirs now. This is how much he thought he was, uh, you know, he was hearing it so much. You know, we gotta, we gotta check on this. Hey, how you doing? You okay? Alhamdulillah. Or just make a phone call. You know, I'm just checking on you. You need anything? Let us know, whatever. You know, and inshallah, after this virus passes and we can all start really seeing each other, we need to, you know, take it a step further and start going over to visit each other. Make sure everybody, you know, call. Hey, can we come over? We just want to see how you're doing. Or, hey, can you come over? Check us out. Whatever. Just make sure we're all keeping in touch with each other. Because we got to do that. we got to do that. Next thing. A uh, few instances that happened in Medina that we see this, this heightened level of, uh, of community. Uh, when the Prophet ﷺ uh, migrated to Medina, uh, he established uh, a khuwa between the Muhajirun and the Ansar. And the Muhajirun, because they were escaping persecution, running from Quraysh, they left a lot of their belongings behind, and they literally left their homes, everything, they just left. So they had nothing. They come, and when they get there, one of the stories that we hear is that there was this one family who was made a khuwa. They didn't have enough food for their guest. So what they did was they made the food, gave their guests the food that they made, and they ate in darkness, and they faked as if they were eating food so they wouldn't make their guests feel some kind of way about it. But they made sure their guests ate. I mean, we hear stories like this, right? Or about Abdurrahman ibn Auf, which is a, 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 an amazing story, that when he got to Medina, uh, his Ansari brother that he was paired with said, Listen, I have two wives. You know, I'll, I'll, you, can, you can stay, uh, you can stay up, upstairs. Uh, I think he either gave him the upstairs or the, uh, or the downstairs area. He said, you stay there and you can, I'll divorce one of my wives for you, whichever one you want to marry, I'll divorce one and you can have, and you can have her as, as a wife. He said, you know, he thanked him and then he said, just show me where the marketplace is. But look at how willing, how far he was willing to go to make sure his brother was straight. And you know, we hear stories like this in those days of, of, of when they were building community. What about, you know, actually taking care of the community, right? And this is something that I, I really, I, I'm always moved by. Uh, when it came time for things that the community needed, the Sahaba would step up in, 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 in unimaginable ways. One story, uh, Umar, 
Umar ibn Khattab was competing with Abu Bakr as Siddiq. And Umar decided, I'm going to give half of what I own. Now, some of us, I want y'all to think about how, how deep this is. I want you to look at how much money you got in your bank account, how big your house is, how many cars you got, how much food you have, how much money in your pocket you have, how many shoes, how many clothes, all that stuff that you have. Cut it in half and take it and, and say, I'm going to take this to the measure, whatever the case may be. This is what Umar ibn Khattab did. He took everything that he had, half of it, and he gave it to the Prophet wasallam. Right? Trying to, yes, compete in deeds with Abu Bakr Siddiq, but also to service the community. And then Abu Bakr Siddiq, right? And he may not have had as much as Umar or whatever the case may be. He came and he gave the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I give you all of my wealth. All of it. And he said, what did you, le what did you leave for your family? And he said, I left Allah and his messenger. Right? Now, of course, not everybody needs to give charity on that level. But the idea is that they were down to take care of their community. Uthman ibn Affan once purchased a well and he purchased it for, for, for a large sum of money like a ridiculous amount and he only purchased it, he didn't purchase it for himself he purchased it so the Muslim community could have access to the water and he gave it to the community in another instance Uthman gave so much he gave over a thousand camels he gave so much gold and silver that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Uthman is forgiven for everything that he does from here on out any sin that he might do he's already forgiven for it these men showed up for the community so while we're thinking, I want you guys to keep this in mind. I know we're going through difficult times. I know we can't visit the masjid as much as we like to. I know we, where some of our services are not as ready, readily available to us as we like them to be. But this is our community. This is our masjid. We have to take care of it. We have to keep it going. The Sahaba understood this. They kept the needs of the Muslims going. They did not... Short, they did not shortchange it. They didn't fear anything that might happen to them. They took care of their own. This is ours. It's beautiful to come outside and see Muslim children, you know, running and playing and enjoying themselves and, and really being able to be in a community of safety. To be able to see the masjid and, and, and how glorious it looks, mashallah, and how beautiful it looks. To be able to go there and learn and hear from our, 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 our sheikhs who, who, really, who really work hard to keep us informed and, and, and giving us knowledge. To have all of that. And alhamdulillah, this community built all of that. Hard investments. Patience. Keeping with that. Now is not the time to break. Now is not the time to falter. Now is the time to even give more, to be harder with it. And I'm only saying this because I felt this love in a time when I needed it. You know, we all need it. You know, and this is the time to do it. This is the time to do it. So I just want to encourage everyone to be safe. Please be safe. You know, make good decisions. Make the best decision. You know, your safety is important. You know, I know we want to have fun. I know we want to go out. I know we want to be around our friends. Let's do, let's, let's do less of that. You know, be a little more safe. Think about your families. Think about yourselves. Think about the things you want to do maybe next year, the year after that. The numbers right now are going up insanely. You have to be careful. And we have to take care of each other. We have to look after each other. And we have to look after our community. So inshallah we can continue to do that. Thank you for listening. And uh, yeah. Assalamu alaikum.